Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Troy Lambert, and I'm with my partner in crime, CJ Anaya. Hello, everyone. Excited to be here. Me too. And we're back today <laughs> to talk to you about settings and places and what you do with those in Plotter. So with that, let's dive right in to Plotter again. And let's look at places. Now, places, of course, can be anything from settings to major settings to minor places within your story. But it's basically just a way to track those things for books and for series as well. So we're going to look at those two things right now. So what are the way? What are the? There's a couple of ways we can create places. What are those ways, CJ? First way is my favorite way, which is hit that plus sign next to places because it is the most obvious and that is what that's what I like. So you can click on places or click on the plus sign and you'll see all of these fun boxes where if you have a type A personality like me, you must fill out everything. You can't leave anything blank. <laughs> so you can go in and fill out all of that information based on the location, whether it's home if you have to do any research for places, so for example, in one of my books, I really had to understand the Cherry Blossom Festival and the location that happens in Japan. And so I was researching it and kicking myself for not being massively wealthy and being able to drop tons of money on a flight to Japan. And also, it's Japan, so who wouldn't want to go see Japan? And so I was trying to put all of that information into a Google Doc that I then promptly lost, by the way. So, you know lessons learned, but it would have been nice to have this. So you can put all that information in here. So I guess one of the first things that we ought to look at when it comes to places is attributes, because we've talked about those over and over again. So you can click on attributes and you can kind of customize this to fit your needs. It's very similar to notes in a previous video, wherein you can do research on those places and and you can you know link things in the way that Troy does. So when he does research on 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 something, he will actually have a link that will take him to the website, and that helps you know where your sources are coming from, where that information is coming from, and and if it's that's not necessarily the way you want to organize information about places, that's okay. You can customize attributes however you want to, but just remember that it's global. So whatever you apply to this place, once you add another place, those are the same questions or attributes that will be added to that second place. So just be aware of that specifically. Yeah. How do you I added a couple of examples there, like oh, for sci-fi, for pla like planet. Right. Yeah. Know, okay, if you're right. sci-fi, you want to know what planet this particular place is on, or in a fantasy, what continent is it on? Or you right. might want to know what the climate is or the weather is. So this is something you want to know about every single place that you're going to add in this particular story. Just know that you don't have to fill it out for everything. If it's a minor place where your character is running and out of, or it's a place within a certain continent or whatever, you don't have to add detail to every single thing. It just gives you the option to do that. Mm -hmm. And another way to organize those is to add categories. Now, usually, like for me, because I write mysteries, I write things like, my categories are things like crime scene, victims, um, something like that. So uh, it, whatever you're writing, you can add different categories to them. Perhaps it's a home, perhaps it's somebody's workplace or something along that line. Whatever it is that you need to categorize the places as that helps you organize them. What are some categories that you add at times, CJ? I well because I do fantasy and I do romantic fantasy I'm actually creating certain locations in my head and so what I will use it for is I will say something along like for example Krista's home is in the unseelie realm so she's got a specific seely unseely castle and so I'm trying to visualize that and and explain that and for a lot of authors they can think up these things in their head but because I need to see something in order to riff off of it I will actually go and look up images or go to mid journey you know and just say you know, I need like a a snow white castle just just pure white I want to see what that looks like so then in my brain I can get real specific on how I want to a, change it up a bit and make it look different, but it's a starting place for me and it's a reference. And so I'll title all of the different locations that I've made up. This is a great way in which to create personal maps for yourself because you can add images. So you not only have categories that help you 
classify location, but you can choose images. And if you are creating a, like a map or there's an actual map because you're doing it, you know, in this world, in this modern world and not a fantasy world or a sci-fi world, you know, you can pull those up and reference those, especially in writing. And so you've got some visuals to rely on and you think to yourself, how would I best express this or detail this so that the reader can really visualize it the way that I need them to. So those are really good resources to have. You could just click upload file and select your file that you want and put it in there. And then you've got all of that information in one place in Plotter and you're not surfing your Google Drive or wherever else you're putting all that stuff and it's all separate. You can't find anything. I feel like every time we get on here and I'm telling you what not to do, it's coming from personal experience. Everyone's oh. going to know how long it took CJ to learn the hard way. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, you can add images. The other thing that I often do, because I write mysteries, I place, I base things on real places. So I add a Google Maps link. And some of you are probably tired of hearing me say this if you've heard me talk before. But what I add it, though, is not to the Google Map. I add it to the Google Street View of that place. And then when I'm in my writing place, I will, and I'm not going to do an actual one in here, but you know, whatever street view it is, you add that. And then when you, in your writing process, you simply click on this maps link and it takes you right to the place, like the street view of the place. You can describe that to your reader and jump right back into your writing. So that's something that I'll do as well. If you obviously, if you are basing your places on real places that works for you, but you can also do it to like maps where you modify the Google map to meet, make your continent, but it's actually a map of a real place, but to make your fictional place, you can use a Google maps link to, to that as well, or to some other mapping program you may have used. If you're a GPS guy like me or whatever, you created your own maps. So there's all kinds of reasons to add those links. You can add it to other images that are related to it, but you can add hyperlinks to your notes, which can be very, very useful. The other thing to note is that I, and I added one up here, is that your short description appears right here without having to click into each item. So if you create another new, another new place, you can see this short description up here still. So you don't have to click into the place to see at least a little bit about what that, what that location is about and what it's related to. So there's that. The only other thing that we didn't cover is in this top left-hand corner, there's a place to tag places by books and to add additional tags. So tell us about that, CJ. Something that I really like is the way in which I can categorize things based on what's happening in each book. So I can click on the plus sign next to books and I can say this particular setting only shows up in book one or maybe it shows up in all of them. But it's something that I need to know that way I'm not having to go back through and read all of my books to figure out where certain events happened jogging my memory, or maybe I do need to go back and read a specific scene, but at least I know which book it happened in just to refresh my memory. So books is really nice. Tags is interesting. I don't use tags very often when it comes to places. And I don't know too many people within the plotter community who use it specifically for places. Although one person likes to tag it almost as a, as a category. So it's like, instead of using the category option, they use tags instead. And they're tagging anything that is like, you know, the crime scene or the victim's home or the police, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's something that they're, they're tagging places for and saying that that's how they're categorizing stuff. So it's really interchangeable based on whatever it is that's going to help you yeah. figure out how you want to organize that. Yeah, because you could have your attributes be cities and then have your tags be continents or something like right. that. So yeah. you could flip around. The, basically, there's a number of ways to organize places by using those tags and categories and attributes, and you can use whichever ones work the best for you. Mm -hmm. So if you had, a, for instance, if we had this and this was categorized as a victim's home, but it was on a certain planet or in a certain continent, we could also add a tag instead of actually typing something in here that would describe that as well. So that's another way that you can use places. There's a, there's just an infinite number of ways you could organize things with them and writers use different things because different things work for different people. So I, I think if we didn't miss anything, that's all for places, right, CJ? That's correct. We did all good. Right. A plus. 
A plus. A plus. A plus. Good. I got a good grade. Finally. See that bomb? You were wrong about me. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> with that, everyone, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. And we'll see you in our next video.